Today I'm going to be trying to fit some timber frame windows that I've built. There's three of them and I'll try and show the process involved in fitting windows. I've not fitted windows before so this is very much a case of um, feeling my way and making it up as I go along. Um, hasn't been a great deal of progress with the build recently, uh, hence the long gap between the last episode. Um, I'm waiting for an electrician to come and do the first fix electrics. I fitted the um, the armoured cable in, dug the trenches between the house and my adjacent shed and this summer house uh, and put the armoured cable in but I'm just waiting for everything to be connected up. I'm also waiting for um, a joiner to come and build some timber doors. Timber windows I had a go at making them myself. There's two fixed lights at the front of the building and over here, just to my right, uh, I've managed to build um, a casement window. Slightly mixed results, but as I say, uh, hopefully adequate. So I'm going to show uh, the stages of fitting the windows as best I can and the way that I'm going about it. It's not the expert way necessarily because I'm not an expert. This is a DIY project. But if it helps with any of your builds out there, then that's great. So these are the windows that I've built. There's um, two fixed ones, that one and that one. And then at the end there you've got the casement. And there's the glazing that I've been waiting for. Just basic uh, double glazed units. Um, I asked for the thinnest possible glazing units that I could get for six four all right so that's 14 millimeters in total so this is the timber that i started off with all right it's just a, a block of redwood timber untreated so that's a bit of a risk around here with all the rain that we get and then i use my table saw to cut an l shape out of it all right and then so there's the L shape there at the end and then that's that's the kind of mock-up of the joint that I designed so that when we get to, to connect the timber together it sort of works like that. I think the crucial bit here for me is if I can just manage this when the When the window's fitted, basically that's that's how it goes. The window fits into there, and then I use a glazing glazing bead on the outside um, and sealant just to hold the window in place. And the crucial thing is to make sure that your the depth of your rebate is sufficient to make sure that you don't see any of the glazing bar, that black stuff there, so that you've just got clear glass. So that's how I've gone about designing it. So I've now fitted here this gasket stuff. I think it's about two millimeters deep and it's sticky on both sides so that when I peel this gasket, when I peel this uh, cover strip off, the glazing will sit against this, I think it's EPDM gasket and that will um, hold the window in place and create hopefully a decent weatherproof seal. I've also fitted um, some window sills to each, each of these uh, window frames. So here's the aperture for the window, one of the windows. You see the Tyvek, um, I've wrapped it around and then I've put some little infill bits here and used some of this um, Tyvek adhesive tape just to hold, hold it in place and protect this corner and likewise down at the bottom as well. There is a, a kind of expanding type of Tyvek tape that you can use on these corners um, 
which I didn't eventually get so I've just used the roll of, of this tape here which is used to join the Tyvek sheets together I've just made use of that stuff really and bits of offcuts of the Tyvek to try and waterproof these corners That's all right, it's gone in. Right. So, that's fine. That's the window in place. Now during the course of fitting this window frame, it's a wooden window frame, I'd fixed it in three points and then the fourth one, but it had pushed, the, the window frame at the top had pushed out in one corner so that when I was pushing the glass in, it wasn't sitting squarely in all of these gaskets down, down here and along the top. Um, because the frame had warped so I've undone this screw here and just readjusted this forward or backwards can't remember which and the windows now sitting square I've put a little bit of a wedge in there and just re-screwed it so that should help well that's helped to solve the problem really so what I'm going to do now is just uh, take off this take off this backing here double sided kind of sticky stuff and then plunk this window onto here but first of all the the little pegs that have been given spaces are too deep when they sit on the bottom here for the frame to go in comfortably so I'm going to have to find some little sprigs of hardwood that are a bit thinner than that and use them instead So I've got this gasket stuck onto the um, little bit of beading here. I'm just going to tear the backing off. I've got some stainless steel pins ready. That's better. Right. So this now goes up. That's the way. to the window. That's, that's bomb proof. It's stuck already that. One more pin. 
Well, it's grand. Same down here. So it's been threatening to rain all day and it's arrived. So I'm trying to put these windows in, but it's a bit of a struggle with the rain. However, I'm making some progress. Um, I've got the glass in. Okay. And I've got the beading. Uh, the beading at the bottom will allow that to um, overlap, overhang a little bit so that any water that comes down off the window will drain clear of the, the window onto, onto this window sill. And um, I've used stainless steel panel pins just up and down here, about four positions. And I've found a bit of uh, hardwood, some oak here, and I think that's mahogany. So I've made these um, little bits of detailed detail. I'm on with this one. I forget what they call these now. Um, anyway, they hold the window in. They will be painted eventually. But this one, as you can see, this one overlaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it back so that it looks more like this one. I've got this one a bit more set in. It's just set back from the window frame. I've got the other one completed. That one's in. Quite pleased with the way that's turned out. I've just used wooden packers here like little wedges from both both sides as you can see there and uh, that is what I've screwed through to secure the frame in, in, in position in the opening and just finally regarding the windows I've um, given them a good sanding down and uh, several coats of undercoat, primer, base coat and then a top gloss coat just to try and give them a bit of uh, weatherproofing. So that's the uh, glazing beading there, that's the window frame. And you'll also see that the gap now I've filled with uh, general builders expanding foam and then used some um, silicone sealant just to make sure that these edges are all waterproof all the way around the window. You can see at the front of the summer house that um, I'm still waiting for the double doors to be uh, constructed and fitted. And I think that's going to slow me down a little bit in terms of getting this front elevation cladded. Because uh, I, I don't quite know exactly where the, um, the frame for the door is going to be. It might be that it's set in a little bit. could be that it's butted up against there. I'm not making the doors on the frame, so I'm going to wait until the joiner um, gets on with that. So, the next job now is to get this... Um, I'm going to start on the side elevation here where the window is and get some of this cladding installed. So this is the cladding that I've got. It's uh, from a company called Silver Timber and it was uh, delivered um, a couple of days ago. And what I've done is I've sheeted it over because it's been quite wet recently. It's uh, Siberian larch. It's quite a nice quality timber, really. This is the, um, the stuff. So you can see the profile there. It's, um, it's kind of um, a tongue and groove, but there's a kind of shadow gap here. Uh, but I like the idea of this angled rebate so that it sheds water. board what I'm doing is I'm putting some wood preservative on particularly making sure I get the back of it done and the end grain and also into the groove as well 
So a couple of things that I've picked up from watching other people doing this is uh, the need with these horizontal uh, vertical slate buttons fitted because you've got an open space at the bottom here you need to put some sort of mesh or uh, other kind of insect guard along the bottom to stop insects getting up and uh, you know making wasps nests and so on up in, in your structure. So I've got this nylon mesh off eBay and that's what I've fitted here. I've just stapled it underneath the batten and then wrapped it round onto the front there. So having done that I need to get this first board on exactly uh, plumb, exactly horizontal. So I've just pre-nailed it. I've got some uh, 65 millimeter stainless steel ring shank flat headed nails for this job. So <coughs> This is the most important bit now is getting this on. So I'm going to just overhang it a little bit off the bottom there and try and get it horizontal. What I might do is just tap it on. Sure, I've got it flush at the end. No, no. Pretty good. Uh, I don't know if there's any easier way of doing this, you've just got to make sure that your first board is absolutely horizontal because everything builds up from here. It's quite quite hard to get a start with these uh, with these nails and they're a little bit soft as well I suppose like nails tend to be. So what I'm doing is I'm pre-drilling the holes so that I can get the nails in into this uh, softer batten timber behind. So I'm going to try and keep everything in alignment if I can. Make it look neat. That's great. Then I can use this uh, ring shank stainless steel nail. That'll just pop into there. What I'm conscious of as well is just lifting the board a little bit to leave a gap. I think it talks about a two or three millimetre gap on the uh, on the timber to allow for expansion and contraction. So at each end, I'm just lifting it a little bit before I pop that nail in. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary, but uh, what I don't want is for this wood to kind of bow outwards or cockle in some way. So that's the idea. But checking all the time that I'm still keeping to horizontal. Right, once I get it going a, get a bit I'll just drive these nails home. Not sure if I'll put two in each station or not. Um, maybe at the ends I will. So as you can see over my shoulder there, um, I finally got the cladding on the um, two side walls. This is the wall that's most visible, so I've used reasonably nice quality boards on there. The far side wall is less visible and that's where I've put a few boards in that are maybe not quite as nice looking and there's a few that I've actually jointed in there. Uh, I've still got the front wall to do and I'll do that once the um, doors have been fitted. So that's going to be another two and a half, maybe three weeks while they're being manufactured. So let's just have a quick look at the, um, the cladding in a bit more detail. So I've used um, two nails at the ends here and then using these 400 centers I've put an extra nail roughly about I suppose two-thirds of the way up each board 
So that's um, so that's how that's worked out. This is Siberian larch cladding. Um, it's got this kind of shadow line um, feature here, which is quite nice. And I've finished it with a, a UV protection coating. There's various manufacturers in the UK. Um, so that's the first coat on. Gonna need another coat once the weather improves. It's been raining quite a bit. Uh, I guess the most difficult bit was making sure that everything was in alignment as I went up past the window here and made sure that when I got to this point up here that everything was at the same height but it, it worked out okay and then <clears throat> cutting that final board at the top at an angle to fit the, um, the gradient of the roof line. So the Siberian latch is going to be fitted to the sides and the front and at the back I've just used some simple softwood shiplap timber which um, I've treated to stop it from, well to, to help prevent it from rotting away. The back's not going to be seen so you don't really need to clad it with expensive materials. The nails went in okay, but uh, occasionally I would encounter a knot, maybe in the batten below, and at times I had to pull some of the nails out. And that was a bit of a process really. Once these ring shank nails get a grip into a knot below, they're so difficult to pull out. So occasionally, uh, obviously having pulled them out I had to drill the hole to actually get the replacement nail uh, to go in. So that's it for now. The next process on this build is to get the first fixed electrics in, uh, maybe do some insulation work inside and plasterboarding and then get the door fixed in place and finish off the cladding on the outside so it's coming on thanks for watching if you've uh, found any use in this um, series so far please give it a, a like and consider subscribing to the channel for further updates